Hello and welcome to a video where I'll be taking you through the functionality in the suppress module in Cygnus. So firstly let's right mouse click on our input data file and select suppress from the menu. Okay so the form is now opened and as you can see it's broken down into uh, categories so we have deceased along the top with all the available files highlighted at the moment. We have mover, which is the gone away lists, and you can see there we have those files uh, all available as well at the moment, or enabled. Uh, we have one preference list, which is the mailing preference service. Uh, and we also have some company uh, lists from the red group, and they are the business suppression file, broken down into the various categories, as you can see here. And down the bottom also we have the quick dupe functionality, which is um, a slightly loosened off um, version of dedupe. Um, it's not designed to be a replacement for dedupe purge, but it's just an alternative quick dedupe capability that's available for you. Okay, so what should we do? First of all, let's run a deceased suppression process. So we'll turn off the mover files, and to do that you just click on the button and that releases them all up, as you can see, so they're all turned off. We'll release the preference one and we'll also turn off quick dupe by just clicking on that button as well. So at the moment, as you can see, along the top we've got the deceased option still enabled with all the files um, set to be run against. Before we do that, however, let's have a look at some of these options here. We have um, the, the practical setting, which if I right mouse click gives you another option, which is overkill, uh, which just loosens off the matching levels a little bit to give you a, a higher match rate. And we have the four name matching um, levels, uh, sorry, the, the matching levels of individual, family, or one per address. And we have the four name matching levels of loose, moderate, strict, and ultra strict. Uh, and just to quickly um, give you an idea of what that means, um, with loose, for example, you might match a Mr. Smith against an M. Smith. Um, whereas with strict, for example, you would have to have Mr. M. Smith and Mr. M. Smith or Michael Smith and Michael Smith, whereas with Loose, Michael Smith wouldn't match with M. Smith. So um, there's a bit more information about um, these settings in the user guide. Okay, so there are our options. Um, so let's run against all of the deceased files. And to do that, we just click Save and click Run. Okay, so the first part there was um, just sorting things uh, into their index indexes, and now we're into the actual matching process. And the information down the bottom that you can monitor as it progresses, uh, we have the percentage. Um, and as you can see, it also displays the outbound postcode, which is sorted into uh, order, alphabetical order. So it'll start obviously with AB and work its way through to ZE in the Shetland Islands. Um, so that gives you an idea of how far through it's uh, progressed so far. Uh, we also have how many records on the input file are left to be matched, so we're down to about 3,000 at the moment, and how many records on the suppression files that are left to be matched against. Uh, at the moment, as you can see, it's set to about 42 million. And as we progress through, how many matches it's found so far. Okay. Okay, so that's about come to the end. And so far, as you can see, we've got 289 matches, 290. And there we are, matching process finished. Okay, so let's take a look at the results. Now, there's a couple of things to consider here. First of all, you can look at the results interactively, uh, or you can look at them on a report. So first of all, let's have a look at the, uh, the actual uh, matches themselves. So click on that button. And there we can see on the left hand side, we have the record from mortar screen in this case. And on the right hand side, we have the record that it's matched against. And you can flick through by using these navigation buttons to have a look at the matches. The next button, this next set suppression category, jumps to the next uh, category as it says. So from mortar screen, we'll jump to TBR. And then from TBR, we can jump to NDR, for example. And you can work your way through the various files just to make sure that you're happy with the matching. And this button here, just to let, let you know what that means, um, you can jump directly to one of the categories. So if you want to go and have a look at OBIT matches, for example, you can select that 
and there we go, we're into the OBIT matches. So on the left hand side is the record from the OBIT database, and on the right hand side is the person who's matched against it. Okay, so let's close that down and take a look at the reports. So click on the I to load the, load the reports. Just expand them a little bit. Okay, so in here you can see we've got all of the data sets listed in this column here, the number of records in each of those data sets, and how many records have been dropped from each of our uh, against each of these files, totaling 291. Flip to the next page, this gives you the hierarchy. So MPS deceased was at the top of the hierarchy, then Experian mortality and more screen, etc. And this can be controlled by your settings. The default is lowest royalty first. Next page shows you some matches. So here you can gain a different method of looking at a sample of the matches just to check that you're happy with the, uh, the matching that's occurred during that process. And you can flick through the various pages um, just to make sure that you're happy. And if we click to the end, in here you can see the charges. So for MPS deceased, for example, where we've got one match, there is zero royalty. For Experian Mortality, we have 78 matches, and they're at uh, 23p, uh, and you can see the total there, £7.94, with a total cost of £66.90. Okay. Okay, so that's the uh, that's deceased, and what we can do now is go back to our settings on, on Suppressions tab, and, and change it. So let's say we don't want to do a decease now, we want to deselect all of those files. And let's say, for example, we want to just run against a couple of the mover or gone away files. So let's choose Experian Movers and NCOA, just as an example. Okay, so save and run. So once again, it uh, retrieves the data, indexes it, and then it goes into its matching process. Once again, you can see progress, how many records of our input file are left to be matched, and how many on the uh, gone away data sets uh, are left matched against. So here you can see we've got 138 million records left to, uh, to be matched against. OK, so let's uh, chase that through. So that processing has about finished 99.1% uh, of the way through. So far we have 216 hits, just a few records left to match, and we're done. Okay, so once again we can go into the results and look at some of the matches, just to make sure that uh, once again, peace of mind that you're happy with uh, the quality of matching that's happened. Okay. So that process, just to recap, was just running a gone away uh, matching uh, routine against two of the files rather than all of them. Um, but just to recap, if you want to run against all of them, you use the master button at the end, um, but then you can turn them off or on individually uh, to select the ones that you want. OK, so let's have a look at some of the options uh, further down. Uh, first of all, let's look at multi-matching. So let's select the multi-matching button. And if I right mouse click over it, you can see there are a number of options. And to explain what these actually mean, we have a single match trigger, which is effectively a matching against one of the files. However, a two match trigger means that if the input record appears on at least two of the suppression files, then it will be recorded as a match uh, and uh, charged appropriately. So for example, under normal circumstances, uh, a record might match more than one file, but it will only actually be recorded against one of them. However, with the multi-match triggers, if you wanted it to match against two of the files for verification purposes, for example, then yes, of course, it will match against both, but you'll also get charged a royalty fee against both, if applicable. Obviously, MPS doesn't have a royalty fee. And what this means is as well, of course, that uh, if we go with three match trigger as a sort of demonstration, what that means is, if a record appears on two of our deceased files, then it will not get dropped. However, if it matches against three, or indeed more, um, then it will get recorded as a match. Um, but as mentioned, you will pay royalties for each of the files that it uh, matches against. So let's run that and then have a look at the results.
Okay, so off we go. Okay, so that's just about finished. So let's have a good look at the results. Into the matches again, you can just see there um, before or, or the uh, record from the database and that record from the input file. But however, because we've done multi-matching, the reports themselves will probably mean uh, a little bit more. So let's go into the report here, expand it a little bit so we can see it. Okay, so we had four files selected, mortar screen, NDR, OBIT, and TBR. And as you can see here, we've matched 50 against mortar screen and nine against NDR. And there are our hits in hierarchical order. Some of the examples, and then to the costing. Okay. Now, if we look at the actual data itself, if I open the suppressed file and choose a field, so right mouse click, select fields, and go to D reasons and reasons count. Okay, as you can see here, this particular uh, person has matched against mortar screen, national deceased register, and obit. And the reasons count is three. And what that means is that this uh, particular match will, will only be selected if it's matched against three or more of the suppression files. But it also means, uh, just to, uh, to recap, that you will be um, subject to, subject to uh, royalty against each of the three files. However, what it does do, of course, it gives you a little bit of reassurance that uh, this uh, particular person is on these files in a legitimate way um, because they are uh, appearing on three of the files at the very least. OK, so that's multi-matching. We'll go back to the suppress module and have a look at some of the other options. So first of all, charging bias. Um, it's set to factory, uh, which is the default setting. Of course, you can change your default by selecting any of the other options. Um, perhaps something like specific might be something you want to set up where you can have control over the hierarchy that you require. Um, and to do that, uh, you would set up a list within your settings um, and then select it here. You might have more than one. Um, I've only got one called client A. Um, so that's the one that I would use here. Uh, and that might be um, you know, whatever uh, order of uh, hierarchy that you require rather than a, a default. OK, we have, uh, as mentioned previously, um, the business suppression file. And there are two levels of company matching that you can choose, cluster and entity. And the best way to describe that probably is with uh, company cluster it's a slightly looser matching of the company name. So something like um, Software Bureau Holdings might match against Software Bureau Limited, um, whereas in an entity basis, those two probably wouldn't match because of the difference between Holdings and Limited. Um, so Cluster is a slightly looser um, name, company name matching. Okay, for reporting purposes only, um, you can look at a report showing you the suppression rates uh, or indeed the flag rates. Um, that doesn't affect what you would ultimately um, uh, pay for your matches. That would depend on whether you're going to export the uh, flag records or not. Um, but for reporting purposes, you can just choose uh, whether you want to see the suppression rates or indeed the flag rates. OK, and finally, quick dupe. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, um, you can run a, a quick dedupe process on your input data. Um, it doesn't use as, um, as uh, sort of uh, sophisticated rules as it does in our dedupe and purge modules, um, but it is um, quite a useful little check uh, that you might want to, um, to make against your input data by running a quick dupe process on it. OK, so that's the suppress module. Um, and uh, any questions, please email me. Details to follow. Thank you very much.